So continuing here, that I want everybody to be safe and sound, warm and dry, okay, if there's no reason that they can't be, and there isn't. And it drives me nuts, quite frankly. And it should drive you nuts. It should drive all of us nuts. And understand, this is at the root of all our misery, is the suffering of other people. Not just suffering necessarily from a, a natural disaster, but this con chronic, perpetual suffering in, and increasing suffering. We've set up agencies to fix these problems, and they don't. More and more people are falling through the cracks at a cost of the taxpayers of $50 billion a year. Okay, that's a lot of money in anybody's estimation. And it's all going in the pockets of very few people, like guys like Rich Dad. Okay, his ilk have gotten fabulously wealthy from these subsidies, whether they take them directly or not. Okay, the industry in and of itself has benefited greatly in terms of being able to fix prices, manipulate markets. Okay, creating more homelessness because homelessness is just unaffordable housing. The government agencies, the welfare agencies set up to solve this problem aren't doing it. They're failing and they're citing budget constraints because if they're given enough money, they say they can fix it. Okay, but it's not getting fixed. They don't want it fixed. Who doesn't want it fixed? Remember, if people aren't dying out in the streets, this is how diabolical and evil this whole thing is. And people got to wrap their minds around. Okay, then they're not going to be able to extract those exorbitant rents and mortgages out there. And so many people depend on that, including the government. This is where it gets fascist, in my mind, when the government it becomes a special, uh, a special interest agency colluding against the best interests of the people. Okay, this is wrong because raising your cost of living is never good. And this is what people got to understand. Property taxes are never good, but they, this is how they push them. I hear it all the time. Well, if the fire department just has more money, we could hire more people and you'd all be safer. Okay, fine. Look, we're all important. That's what we got to get through our heads. But there's going to be dramatic unemployment if we start actually fixing problems, if Trump starts fixing problems. In the meantime, I'm going to keep speaking out for these downtrodden. Okay, I don't care what they've done in their past, where their heads are at. They're misfits. They're the least of men. They're nobodies. They're riffraff. That's Jesus. And that should be my attitude. So I can bitch and moan at God all day for, why aren't you doing more? I mean, why don't you give us a sign from heaven and, and put these evildoers in their place and set the pe captives free? He's going to do that on his time. And it's not my place. I'm going to talk back to God, but I do. When I get rebellious and I feel I'm going to go sin and I'm going to, I'm going to use God's grace later, I'm going to forgive myself. I would say, you got to forgive me, God, because of your grace, because Jesus died on the cross. I'm covered in his blood. You know, like anybody that calls on the name of Jesus, it's true. Like Hal Lindsey's always talking about. Every sin we've ever committed, every sin we're going to commit in the future has already been covered by his blood. Once you're given over to him to allow the Holy Spirit into your life to take over. Okay, that's it. It takes over. It doesn't mean you're perfect all of a sudden. You're still human. You've got your carnal nature. You've got your flaws. Let every man be called a liar. But God can't lie. It goes against his very essence. You understand? So it's a paradox. Again, we've got to embrace that idea so that we can grow and, and model ourselves more after God. That's what we're trying to do. And it's all written, right? We're all without excuse. It's all in the Bible. It's all explained. All this great wisdom. All the knowledge of the ages is at our fingertips. All of us. We should all just seize this power, this empowerment, and come out of Babylon. This ignorance and this confusion, these muddy, bloody waters that they've imposed on us. This pseudo-reality uh, nonsense. I mean, it's just, the whole thing is based on madness, okay? It's madness from the top down. That's how they do it. It's like, it's like leaven working through the dough. The money, the love of money is so deeply entrenched in our hearts and minds and spirits. We just embrace it like it's common sense. It's logical. It's pragmatic. It's practical to uh, embrace money. And I understand it, and God understands that. But we've got to move away from it. And how do we do that? That's why I always get into economics is because this is the way to freedom. That the only way that I know of. If we, if God wasn't, let's say there, it is just a metaphor that Jesus will return and the earth will be renewed and the evildoers will be put in their place, which is hell, of course, separated from the righteous. It's up to us. That's it. You know, that God has got to use each one of us as individuals and collectively as his vessels to get the job done. 
That's it. We can't say, well, we need the angels. Yeah, we do. We need God's help. And he's the one giving. He's living in us if we let him. And he's helping us to understand these things. But the gravity of the situation cannot be overstressed or overstated. It can't be. People are dying. They're committing genocide under our noses. We've got to get that through our heads. Let's bind the wound on the collective body of humanity where it's logical, where it is hemorrhaging. Let's stop the death. And let's get rid of these poor houses that are just there to sustain this, this bleeding, like the, you know, the triage, the trauma unit. You know, the ICU, right? Intensive care unit. No, no, no. Let's fix the damn problems, especially in light of the fact that you could cut taxes at the same time. There's, there's no logical reason not to do the things I'm saying. Donald Trump, if I was talking to you, man, I'd say do it. Slash Section 8. At least Maybe do something. You think, well, I was too radical with my idea of slashing it by two-thirds, taking a third of that, putting it aside to actually fix the problem. Do it your way. If you need to be more gentle, but just do it, man. Fix the damn problem. Fix poverty. And this is where they've got us. It's, all they need is one commodity that's an essential human need they can latch on to and get us all dependent, causes chain reaction inflation, which, which translates to chain reaction debasement of currency, deworthing of our money. It's all very... Easy to understand if you consider what I'm saying. According to the laws of supply and demand, according to any any semblance of any progress, what you're going to have in, in, a, in a free market, in an open market, where there's competition, you're going to have a perpetually lower cost of living. That's what progress, that's how it's measured. That means you're in, you, we have deflation and your currency keeps going up in worth. That's progress across the board. I'm, otherwise, you're just creating problems. It's unnatural, it's artificial. And you're just creating wealth disparities, more problems, class warfare, all the miseries, the poverty. It's it, it, all those other agencies I've, I've mentioned. Okay, like the the pov- like the uh, the crime industrial complex, the social welfare industrial complex, the debt industrial complex, the dubious warfare industrial complex. All of them, and even the government industrial complex as a whole, is working against as the establishment industrial complex. As this poverty industrial, it revolves around poverty. This is the most important, the most key basic element and ingredient they need is to maintain poverty. Okay, so this is literally going after the heart of the beast. So if you cut it's, uh, Section 8 by, say, uh, we're going 20%, you know, 10%, start low, and then just keep going up. And take those funds and put even half of that, put 5% aside to actually fix the problem. And you just take people that have been on this Section 8 for the longest. Start with them and say, now we're moving you out of this place that we're paying the landlord on into a place that we're buying for you, and you're still going to keep paying what you know the, the fair amount until it's paid for, okay? Whatever you can afford, okay? That's how it is now with Section 8, that the, your cost share might just be 1 20th of what your actual rent is. Okay, depending on what the government agency says, HUD, this housing authority, this Section 8 people, I don't know. I've never, you know, dealt with these people. I've seen the application for it, and they do favor immigrants because, you know, if you're a farm worker, while well, you get bumped up, you're very important to the economy to grow the food. So this is how this whole leapfrogging has taken place, and so much of this, you know, the immigration problems have flourished. They've helped it to flourish. They want us divided. They like clash of civilization. Look at Bill Crystal, such an a-hole. Okay, I mean, what a little, little, little piss ant. I, I don't like elitist people, okay? And poor people, I've, I've met poor people that are elitist, and I don't get that, okay? But, you know, any, any inkling of elitism, I detest. I can sniff it out. I'm like a, I'm like a, a you know, elitist sniffing human, okay? Is that I can tell, you know, and I know rich people I've, I, intimately that are not elitist. Personally, I know people that are not like that. They believe in American precepts and principles, equality, egalitarian principles, and that this is the object is to be idealistic. Like Jesus said, we're not compromising. Be ye perfect as a father in heaven. So we're to work toward that world, society, that is perfect. So, you know, attacking poverty is, that is the heart of the beast. And if Trump's really going to do that, he's got to know <coughs> what's going to get him killed. It's very radical. It'll cause mass unemployment. So what do you do? Now, why does that have to be a problem? It doesn't have to be a problem. But we believe it is. We believe in it. 
we you understand that mass unemployment. We believe that you know the answer to economic problems create job creation. I'm not saying it's bad to give people something to do. I'm just saying we shouldn't have to live under the gun. I mean, if there's no jobs, there's no jobs. I mean, you're just stating a fact. You're just being scientific. You're being mathematical. You're being pragmatic, practical. You're showing common sense. You you know you're speaking truth. You're saying, look, there's just not jobs, and you know you. <coughs> <laughs> we could get innovative. We could go out and do things. Let's go start building artificial reefs to satisfy those surfers on the coast. Okay, let's. we can find things to do. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't. But we should be free and prosperous. That's the only way you can be free. You can't be free if you're not financially free. And the only people that are financially free are prosperous. You understand how this thing works? So we've all got to get it. We shouldn't be living in this fear of the paycheck. And if I don't get it, and I'm willing to do this, and I understand why people <coughs> compromise their heart and soul, and their minds, their spirits, their integrity, their honor, their, their salvation for a buck because they're scared of not having those bucks. So we've all got to, you know, empathize with people the way God does and show mercy while we're trying to pull them from the flames. That's what we're trying to do. Don't discriminate. It's indiscriminate. When you try to try to pull people from the flames of hell and damnation, <coughs> you know, the rain falls on the wicked and the righteous alike. God doesn't discriminate. And the sun shines on the wicked and the righteous alike. And we are to be those people that do that, that show that, that live that and emulate that. And, and go out there and take it seriously. But we just want the problems fixed. And we know that it's going to kill Satan because he's a hater of humanity. And he loves genocide. He loves death. And we know these top evildoers, these top deceivers, you know, they're, they're not even trying to deceive anymore. They're out in the open with these Georgia Guidestones, how they want to get the earth down to 500 million from its current 7 point something billion people. So we know how evil they are. We know that they're not beyond doing anything, you know, and we've just got to wake up to that reality and be traumatized, be outraged, and be willing to fight the good fight and say, God, use me as a vessel. That's it, because I this is my life's enjoyment. I can't enjoy my life fully day by day when I see fellow human beings, brothers and sisters, the least of men, Jesus Christ out there dying out in the cold. I'm not okay with it. I don't want to be okay with it. I would give anything not to, to, to have this thing fixed. Thank God God knows it. And I want the whole world to know it. And I want you to be that same person. And say, let's fix the damn problems. And let's go for the heart of the beast. Let's bind the wound where it's hemorrhaging. Let's be logical here. Let's fix the damn problems. And all of it starts falling into place. And these evil people at the top, that's the last thing they want. Okay, any appreciable amount of time when the, we the people get this, a taste of this thing called freedom, absolute freedom, not for some, not in a spotty manner selectively, but across the board. Okay, that's the way it has to be. It has to be that way. And all you good capitalists out there, you better be the most outspoken about crony capitalism. And the same with a good communist. If you really believe it, you're socialist, you believe your stuff, well, then you've got to be the most outspoken. You've got to get across to people. You've got to explain your point of view. You've got to explain, you communists, how you're outraged at the fascist tactics of covering up your faces and committing terrorist, domestic terrorist acts of intimidation and violence upon people, trying to shut down their free speech, which is very un-American. So all you good communists and socialists, you should be speaking out against them. And see, I'm excoriating both sides of this thing. And I'm saying to the to the good capitalists out there that are egalitarian, because you ain't worth crap to me if you're not an egalitarian. You're not a good American. You don't believe in a rising tide of prosperity across the board. You don't believe in setting the captives free. Okay, if you're not a good capitalist. If you're a crony capitalism, you're just as bad as the worst commie out there. You're hiding. You're hiding your faces as a metaphor, as an analogy. Okay, just by not being outspoken and defending your point. Because it's wrong. Because you know what you're trying to defend is a dog-eat-dog, dog, let's devour each other, social Darwinian rat race bull. That's all it is. I know it. I'm not a stupid man. I can understand economics, I can understand real estate, and I can become fabulously wealthy. I don't need to. 
I don't need you to prove my point. I can see the end from the beginning, just like we're all endowed with, gifted with an imagination. Think, are you going to really be happier by being extravagant and living an extravagant lifestyle? Or was it really your conscience? It wasn't your intelligence that kept you humble, kept you in adversity, kept you down.